long time ago in a galaxy far away, marijuana had a bad rap. In the 1940s, a film called Reefer Madness told everybody that marijuana was public enemy number one. In the 90s, we were treated to a lot of commercials comparing drugs to hot butter and our brains to eggs. This is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. But recently, weed made a huge comeback. Many people claim it's a miracle drug, good for everything from anxiety to treating chronic pain. Weed's even legal in a lot of places now. So what's the deal? I'm Maria. I was born and raised here in Truckee, California. I was very young when I started smoking weed. I was in middle school actually, and I just saw my brother doing it, so I thought, and I thought he was the coolest person ever. So I was like, oh, maybe I'll be cool like him. What I liked about smoking weed was that it really brought my group of friends together. Um, we really understood each other. I don't know why, but when we were high, we were just like so into each other's minds and we understood what the other one was trying to say or go through. I loved when they would make us laugh like crazy. We were just all laughing at stupid things. Um, it, it was really like an escape from reality. My name is Chase Whitney and I'm from Truckee Tahoe. I started using cannabis products when I was 16 and I used them because my friends were using them and it looked like something fun to do. I kept on using weed because for me it became a substitute for human connection. It made me feel all right to the point where I didn't have to interact with anyone else socially if I had weed because I could just be by myself. Uh, I started smoking when I was 12 years old. It was like a friend just offered me some weed to try and I just tried it and ended up liking it. Uh, what was good about weed is that it just relaxes my mind. My name's Seth, I'm 23 years old. So I started using cannabis when I was 11 and I was initially attracted to it because a lot of my friends were doing it and they seemed to be having a really good time, you know? And I didn't really fit in. So I thought it would be a nice way for me to kind of fit in with my peers. So once I started using cannabis, uh, it basically consumed everything. It was my whole life. There kind of wasn't really anything without weed. Um, all my friends smoked weed. I kind of didn't really associate with people who didn't smoke weed. And uh, that was all I could think about every day, all day. And anytime I felt uncomfortable, I'd go away and I'd smoke some weed. So a way to mask my emotions is uh, what it morphed into in the end. In the beginning, I didn't struggle so much to support my weed habit, but it developed into something that it was a daily struggle to support it, especially when I didn't really work, um, when I was still in school. Um, I pretty much consistently stole money from my mom's drawer. Using cannabis products affected my life in so many ways. One of the big things that it really affected was my memory, especially of those years, which are really critical years of my life. I don't remember in what order or the specifics of a lot of events, even like the most amazing experiences that I had had in my life, some of them, I don't even remember that well because I was just high all the time. Coming from a Mexican family, weed was very taboo. Like it was just, you should not even be around it. And so the fact that I was smoking all the time, um, it started affecting my relationship with my grandparents and my parents. For school, I became very lazy. Um, I was, I started taking naps during class, like I didn't really care. Because of my weed habit, I missed out on college. At my work, when I would show up high, I would just become so lazy, like I didn't care about proper customer service. Weed definitely impacted my health because instead of going to buy food with the money that I had, I would go buy weed. In my life, I have always sort of felt anxious and depressed uh, in general. Weed, for me, when I used it in that way, did not help my 
Social anxiety, if anything, it made it worse. When I smoked weed, school definitely took a back seat. It was one of those things where I wanted to do well in school, but if I had the option to smoke or to go to class high, I would almost always choose the second option. I could just uh, disengage from the world a little bit, and that always felt nice in my own mind. We kind of did have a negative impact on my life. For example, it was like my parents, like they didn't approve of me smoking. Whenever I would like smoke at lunch break at school, when I would come back high, it would kind of like, kind of make me a little paranoid, so I would kind of have to hide it. It would kind of like affect me a bit because I would lose concentration a bit and then my mind would wander somewhere else. So my name is Yu Fang Lin. Uh, I'm an associate professor in the Department of Physiology and Membrane Biology, UC Davis. So marijuana is a plant, um, so it contains uh, many different chemical ingredients. The cannabis or marijuana okay, actually contains a compound which can stimulate our endogenous system, meaning the building system we have. And that the building system, we call it the endocannabinoid system. It is a very important system to maintain our well-being, okay, physically, psychologically. So I think for uh, people seeking high, Mainly, we are focusing on the compounds in the plant that can produce psychoactive uh, properties. Okay? And the majority of this will be THC. Endocannabinoids are molecules that closely resemble the main chemical in the cannabis plant, delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol, or THC. Because THC is so similar to the brain's own endocannabinoids, such as anandamide or 2-AG, smoking marijuana directly affects the brain of the user. So if you just uh, focus on THC for now, then THC has uh, multiple effects on human brain. So it can affect so it's a memory and learning function. It can also affect the uh, motor coordination. Okay, so therefore can affect driving uh, in that sense. And uh, it also has the effect then uh, to produce uh, potentially cause uh, addiction because it generates the same kind of uh, um, reward-seeking behavior just like other hard drugs. When someone smokes marijuana, THC molecules quickly reach the brain. There, THC competes with the brain's endocannabinoids to bind with cannabinoid receptors on neurons that regulate dopamine activity. Among other effects, THC reduces the release of GABA in the striatum. This reduction, in turn, causes nearby dopamine neurons to release more dopamine. Increased dopamine release produces the positive feelings or the marijuana high. Marijuana use can have far-reaching consequences in the user's brain. THC can activate cannabinoid receptors found throughout the brain, altering healthy communication within the brain and with the rest of the body. This can affect emotions, movement, learning, memory, and decision-making. Using marijuana frequently, especially during adolescence, overstimulates the reward system and can change the brain's actual wiring. Such use can lead to addiction and other mental illnesses. So when I smoked, it put me into a sort of drug-induced psychosis. When I was in a drug-induced psychosis, I sort of lost touch with reality and put myself in increasingly dangerous positions where I just would sort of forget about my own mortality and just not really care about being alive. I stopped smoking it, not because I wanted to, but I actually was pregnant, so I had to stop smoking weed. And as the time went by, I would smell it and I wanted it, I wanted it so bad. And now that it's been almost more than a year that I haven't been smoking it, I don't crave it as much, but now that I look back and think about it, I'm like, I was definitely addicted to it. Like the addiction was so bad that there was a few times in the last year and a half of my using where the choice was rent money 
or weed. And every single time, without fail, I'd choose weed. It wasn't something I could do without. Um, I remember this one time where I was smoking weed after work and I just had this thought of like, I don't want to do this. And yet I couldn't stop. And then the thought became more and more insistent. Like, I don't want to do this. I want to stop doing this. And then I started getting angry at myself and mad and it was really sad. And I think I started crying. Um, and the craziest part is I, I kept smoking that joint and I smoked it till it was completely done. And right afterwards I rolled another one and I hated myself for it. And if that's not addiction, I don't know what is. So when I would smoke, it just would take over my life and basically put me in a very negative headspace to the point of where just life lost all joy and meaning and pleasure and passion. Um, when I smoked, it essentially just left me in a place of feeling broken and empty and so removed from everything else in my life. It was like I had no connection to anything and just made it very difficult to enjoy being alive. So I stopped using weed with the help of family and friends who wanted me to feel better. Uh, they were people in my life who saw that I was in pain and just wanted to do what they could to help me get out of that place. Um, I do believe that stopping any addictive habit is a completely personal decision. And to do that requires a lot of courage and bravery and effort because I do not believe it's easy to stop anything addictive, especially weed. It was my choice to stop smoking weed. I wanted a healthier lifestyle and I know people that do drugs while being pregnant and it's kind of sad. Now that I stopped smoking weed, I can see that my health is better. I'm eating properly now. I don't have that cough that I had all the time. There's times where I walk by people and they're smoking weed and just the smell of it really want like gives me that urge to like go smoke weed. But I choose not to, I like walk away. I play with my son, just like anything to like not be around it. I like video games a lot, so I feel like that helped me a lot. Just think of alternatives that you could do. Like I would work out. I would try to go work out when I was, when I barely found out that I was pregnant. Just breathing, you know, practicing my breathing. Hi, I'm Doug Robinson. I've been rock climbing ever since I was a teenager and I wanted to figure out why it felt so good to move through the mountains. So I studied it. I wrote this book called The Alchemy of Action. I'll explain the title a little bit to you. Action, like moving through the wilderness, climbing, hiking, walking in wild terrain. And it turns out that our brains produce the same chemicals that we get when we do drugs. Who here has not played video games, right? You get sucked into the screen with what's happening, right? It gets intense. That's because Dopamine rises in your brain, your pleasure chemical, that gives you rewards for um, like making the next level. Well, being out here, moving your body through the mountains does the same thing. And I don't mean just the mountains, you know, it could be a city park, it doesn't matter. If you go for a walk around the block, around 10 blocks. I've always liked simply scrambling around on boulders. And I hope you can find something in your life that turns you on just as much. I honestly replaced it with just like sports, like I would buy like a skateboard or something just to keep me active. I just stopped smoking weed because it was just kind of just a waste of time. And it kind of like, I can just put that time into something else. And all that money I would spend on it, I can just invest it in something else as well. After I quit smoking weed, I've noticed my mind was a little more straight, like, and then I was kind of more active too. 
One thing that really helped me to quit weed was, uh, and to stay clean, was NA, Narcotics Anonymous. Um, I went to a meeting, it was weird, but I kept coming back, and before long, I didn't want to stop being clean, and I just kept on going ever since. So ever since I quit using, um, everything's improved in my life, really. Um, but one of the biggest things is my favorite thing to do in the whole world, mountain biking, has just become so much more fun and enjoyable, and I find that I'm way better at it. One thing that really helped keep me clean throughout this whole time is Narcotics Anonymous and the people in it. Without that, I don't think I'd be here. To maintain my clean time, I consistently go to 12-step uh, programs. I spend my time with inspiring people who are also sober. I follow my passions, the things that I'm interested in. I do my best to be creative and active and really just spend time doing the things that I love to do. Hey, I'm Nate. And I'm Zach, and we're here to tell you about a few awesome programs we have going at the Gateway Mountain Center. The first program is called MBSAT. It's a mindfulness-based substance use program that takes a deep dive into looking at and understanding addiction. And now I'm going to have my friend Nate tell you about another great group we have going on here at Gateway called the Mindful Warriors Circle. The Mindful Warriors Circle is a youth-led group that meets once a week where you can come and talk about whatever's going on in your life uh, without an adult being present. And get support from people your own age. For more information on any of these programs, visit the website. 